going around this town at the moment. No Jim, doubt. ahead of the season opener tomorrow night, less than 24 hours ago. Great excitement about the show tonight too. Developments yes. from the Essendon Footy Club point of yes. view with Stephen Dank. Story broken on Nine News in Sydney. Damien Barrett along to tell us all about that. And what about this? James Hurd speaks to us exclusively before he heads off tomorrow on a four-month holiday. Yeah, I can't wait to hear from Hurdy. Speaking of the big blockbuster, we love to have the biggest guests on the footy show always. Tonight, we have from the Fremantle football coach, their unbelievably, uh, club I should say, their unbelievably successful coach, Ross Lyons in the house with us tonight. Always love speaking mm. to Rossy Lyons. Jim, this segment is taking off. Hasn't the it? best young talent in the competition. We like to get a look at them early. So tonight, Second Zach Merrill round. from the Bombers, Patrick Cripps from Carlton, yes. Christian Salem from yes. Melbourne, Luke McDonald yes. from your club, and the big boy Jesse Hogan from oh. Melbourne, all live in the studio. Oh. What about that? And the biggest thing to happen in the off-season by far was the Kokoda track. And uh, Sam and Gary went up there. Gary seemed to handle it OK. It nearly finished the old enforcer off. We've got <laughs> line two tonight of the Kokoda Trail. Looking forward to that. Yes, and speaking of the enforcer, GWS plays Sydney. Yes. Big match up there, so we sent him up to do a bit of Sydney street talk. We always love that. We've got a massive show. Let's get started. <laughs> Docklands Precinct, of course, uh, for the footy show on a Thursday night. Why would you be anywhere else? Especially when you've got panellists of this quality. Massive grudge match next Friday night. Essendon, North Melbourne. From the Bombers, superstar in the making, Dyson Heppel! <laughs> See both these men, of course, there's a spare seat at the end, oh, and we're yes. going to introduce that man very shortly because he's only just come back into the country. Ooh. But before we introduce him, let's introduce the number one star of this show, the biggest name in television, 300 games superstar from Geelong, John Sammy Newman. <laughs> to see you. Really looking forward to the season opener on Sunday, yeah. Gary. It'll be exciting and it'll be uh, season just... O yep. Season opener Friday, Collingwood v Frio, Rossi Lyon in the chair. Oh, no, that, that they could be playing. I'm talking about the Grand Prix. First oh, one. Come on, fourth. Down at Delbert Park. Oh, yeah. Young Daniel Ricciardo. I was yeah. there at the opening Were at you? the Crown Entertainment Complex with yeah. Annie Peacock doing Are you the... driving? No, I'm not driving and uh, there's some celebs down there. Was there? Craig Lowndes, nice. Mark Scaife, yes. Dave Coulthard, right. you talk to them all? Jackie Stewart, yes. The Buzzard, <laughs> Craig, oh, Kelly. Craig Kelly was down there. Oh, that's rarefied he company for the Buzzard. I think he off. manages half the drivers and hey, half the people there he was managing. Before we welcome um, our man here, who's... <laughs> that's his Moo. wife. That's his mm. wife, who's married. Oh, yeah, that, that, is her, that is her name, Moo, I'm yeah. not saying... Meredith. Her, her, name Meredith. her name is Meredith, who, but she likes to be known as Moog. Yeah, Beautiful, so gorgeous woman. Not saying Far she... too good for Craig Kelly. Hey, um, before we get, introduce our guest that's uh, vacant, oh, uh, yeah. what about Jim last night? Some congratulations. Jimmy uh, elected again oh. as the president of the North Melbourne Football Club. <laughs> A little known fact, he was unopposed and only just squeaked oh. in. <laughs> Very good news. Now, where is uh, no, our man over Looking here, forward to the next three years uh, enormously. Looking forward to getting stuck in a dowel in a minute too. But we have a vacant chair down the end. This young man is a, a legend of our show, of course. He has, in the off-season, done amazing things, including filming for Getaway. Have a listen to this. He went to Antarctica first, 
then breezed into the Galapagos Islands for a spell, mm -hmm. and then headed down the Amazon River, if you don't mind, Gary. Oh, God, and that's really? why he was unavailable last week, Whoa, but he has boy. just come back in the last 24 hours. I seen him yet. So we would love a great big footy show. Welcome for Shane Crawford. <laughs> Give him a hand force. Well, all right, Jim. Why don't you <laughs> survive from yeah, South America? Well, how do you want to work out how we're going to get him off? Oh, it's nice to have you back, Shane. Oh! <laughs> 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 Like, straight from the Amazon, Shane, have you? What's that point? Sit down, Shane. Hey? Very nice to have you back in the country. How was your time over there? Fantastic. Yeah? How Amazing. did you go there, Forster? That oh, bit of frontal oh, pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I bought you a present, Sam. All the way from the Amazon. This is what I've been living on. I've been living on crickets. Serious? Every morning, part of my diet, I've been eating these. So I thought... Why not give it to my good friend <laughs> to have a crack and just show everyone so you what really it tastes eat, like. They're, they're real crickets. Yeah, well, um, you have a taste... couple. Oh. Go on, go on. There you go. <laughs> oh. Come on, I'm Sam. Not, no, Seriously. You eat one. Have you a go. You do something for once. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just have a couple. No, I'm not eating them. No, they're real crickets. <laughs> why, would, why would I be eating crickets? I've had a... Uh, a oh, no. I've just had a... <laughs> Ribeye, uh, I've just had a beautiful... Rib Why would I be eating crickets? No, don't they? Not no, no, come no, on. No, no, no. When he gets a bit perky later, he no, can. No, for everyone, just to show everyone that you'll Give have a eight go. Eight one so we can get on with the show. Go two. 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 I ate five. <laughs> just you a couple. Eat one. <laughs> just a couple. Here. Go on, for us, you eat one. Here, Gary. No. <laughs> hey, Chuck. Whilst we... What's uh, it like, Jim? Disgusting. <laughs> Contemplate the crickets. You, 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 we asked uh, you to take yeah. some photos while you're away just to give us a little bit of uh, a background of what you've been doing, so share with us. Well, that's a piranha. I caught that in the Amazon. Which one? Uh, got the ah, same teeth ah, as me, ah. yes, that's <laughs> very true. Awfully sharp. Uh, and that's another one, that's a silver piranha, so right. I caught a few. Yep. Which is quite scary. I didn't take them off the hook, and that's obviously in Antarctica with. A few of my new mates, the yeah, penguins, so I uh, had a wonderful trip, amazing, incredible. What did you learn about Antarctica? Show? Well, actually, I, I've got a few facts that uh, I really would love to share with everyone at home and everyone here, if that's okay. Can I do yeah. that? Yep. Yeah. All right. Now, Antarctica is classified as the windiest continent on Earth. What is the second windiest place? Uh -huh. This one. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Bill House. <laughs> Oh. That's exactly right. Now, yes. the second one, I've only got three, so I'll, I'll keep moving on. The waters of Antarctica are unique. Now, they're made up of 70% fresh water, 25% salt water, and 5% of old man pee. Yeah. Oh, no! Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> yep. That's the warm patch right there. Now, the last one is a question for everyone to have a think about, so right take on it on you. board. Right on. There are rumours explorer Douglas Mawson actually ate his own travelling companions. Mm -hmm. So, who on this panel, if you had to eat someone, yep. who would it be? That's a true question. Who, who would you eat? On, on this if panel? You had to eat one uh, do, on this panel? Yeah. Uh, I'd probably eat you because you look very toned. I think it'd be a good cut of meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <coughs> who would you eat, Dyson? Oh, I'd go with, uh, I'd probably go with Jim. He'd, no. probably, be a, <laughs> he'd probably be a nice, a nice fine bit of meat too, I reckon. Oh. <laughs> What does that mean? Oh, <laughs> who would you eat if you had to eat one of oh, us? No. Going somewhere? Well, yeah, I'll go. let's. Uh, no. um, this actually happened down in Antarctica yeah. oh, many, right. many years yeah. ago. Yeah. Well, well I'd be on a very, very strenuous and rigorous diet, so I'd probably try and feed on your brain. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, okay. I tell you what, if our good friend uh, Bill the Mammoth was here... Feed the, oh, feed the whole audience. We'd, uh, <laughs> we'd hollow him out and use him as a bivouac and uh, an oh, air no, no, shelter no, and a I hangar don't... and anything like that. Yeah, I would start with Jim, appetizer, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, not much there, and then I'd finish with you because you? I'd use your back hair yeah. as dental floss. Oh, <laughs> oh, there it was. There. That's there. where oh. it was going. <laughs> All right, well, nice sure to have you back, Shane. Yeah. Yeah. Sit there and be quiet. Dyson Heppel, ladies and gentlemen. Great yes. to see you guys. Right. <laughs> well, hard to do, guys, while uh, Shane's in this sort of mood, but we just need to be serious Same for the moment Dyson. because you've had a, a really tough year last year, the Essendon Footy Club, and uh, only a couple of weeks ago you would have woken up <laughs> and picked the paper up and saw your picture with 13 other of your teammates that have mm -hmm. been named as players who may have taken illegal substances. We, we want to get to the bottom of how that made you feel, uh, particularly when you saw it for the first time. Yeah, Gaz, well, I suppose it was, you know, obviously very disappointing waking up, seeing your, your face in the paper, I suppose, and it really sort of linked you to the actual issue. But, um, you know, as a club... Um, all we could do, we could, it's out of our hands really, so we couldn't do a lot about it. Um, really, we're moving on from it, uh, and as I said, really out of our control, but obviously very disappointing uh, for, on my behalf, and also as a club, and I think as an AFL in general. So, uh, yeah. And I think that's the point, is it is out of your hands and out of your control, and there's no resolution at the moment. So, from your own health point of view, I mean, have you got fears now? You're still not really sure of what went on? No, I, I don't think so. You know, from the, all the resources and um, the research that's been done into it, um, I have no fears of, of health issues down the track, yeah. And Matty Lloyd on Monday night on Footy Classified, who is still close to the Essendon players, of course, said he uh, had some fear for the mental wellbeing and health of not only the players, but family members who yep. are caught up in this as well. H how are your mum and dad and uh, Kate, your girlfriend, and yep. her family, how are they dealing with it? Yeah, well, you know, it was obviously a, a pretty uh, tough time throughout uh, the course of last year. But the family are fine. They're, they're going really well with it and um, really hasn't phased them. And, um, you know, Kate's been very supportive, so all good, all good. Well, this is the first time you've been on the show without the beautiful Kate Turner. She's <laughs> normally in the audience. She loves coming into the footy show. We're disappointed she's not here. But what your four-year anniversary recently, Dice, and uh, we love the romanticism of this tweet. Let's have a look. Here we go. Um, four years with this character. <laughs> hashtag rare unit, hashtag good find. <laughs> yeah, well, no, you got to, uh, you got to keep the missus happy, mate. I'll have to throw something up there for you. But there you go. Rare unit. Yeah. Is that how you used to warm, Foss? That's the sort of language you used right. in the day. I'm uh, probably a bit irrelevant to give you any uh, advice on dating because mm. these days I just get excited if I park my car in a tight space. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I've, been, I've been out of the loop a bit, Gaz. So, uh, yeah. Oh, he's all about he's the away yeah. He's away. No, well, have you got, no come on, give you him some You must have some advice. advice. Well, we well, threw well, this to you because you're I, the most experienced. Well, and and I can give you plenty of advice. And <laughs> always yes. reverse psychology. Right. This is what I believe. Play yeah. hard or, to get? No, no, play hard no. to get. Always play yourself down. Say... You, you come with a minimal package. Right. Sometimes <laughs> can go off in the holster. Just don't say, <laughs> don't say you're a stud. Just say you're not oh, no. well endowed, oh. and that you're a bit of a novice at it. And the first time you have a crack at it, yeah, right. uh, you'll be amazed that if you say you're no good at it, how you're not bad at it. And they'll say, "Gee, imagine how he'll be when he gets his eye in." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Under promise and over deliver. Oh, yeah. If you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, this is he, he's actually thought about this, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. He's put a bit of thought into it. No, but if you if you want to find out, uh, oh, no. Dyson. No, no. If oh. you want to find out if you're likely to score the first time you go out. Oh, right. no. What do you got? If you're likely, if you want to know, you yeah. don't have to just, you're a bit nervous mm. and you think, I wonder take if it's going to... Take the guesswork out. Take the, ask the lady or, or the man. Yes. I mean, yes. nothing wrong with going out with a... No, bloke. there isn't, yes. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> ask the person... Oh, would they no. like to have breakfast in the morning? Mm -hmm. And if they say yes, say, would you like me to ring you in the morning or just give you a nudge? Oh, <laughs> that's one of his Christmas... <laughs> right, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> write it down. Can you believe that, that one? Is that the winner? <laughs> yeah, oh, that, or, oh, no, not another one. That, that no. obviously worked in the 50s. <laughs> or, or screw me if I'm wrong, and I cleaned that up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> screw me if I'm wrong, but I bet you'd like to kiss me. Oh, no. Think about that. Oh, no. <laughs> he was going so well. well. He was going well. Nick Del Sano joins us. Welcome, Nick. Great to have you here. <laughs> Thank you.
you, of course, uh, don't need any of that advice because happily married for 18 months. Yeah, happily married. I haven't used any of those lines, so... Oh. Might have to get up a few uh, times. Probably while yours is working and Sam's never. Yeah. yeah. Hey, first time as a panellist in North Melbourne, Colours, mate. So congratulations. How that? How is that all going? Yes. Yeah. Indeed. Thank you. Uh, going really well, Gaz. Obviously, it was a, uh, a bit of a tough time for me personally, and a lot of guys have gone through it, so I don't feel like I'm the only one. But, um, you know, a big change after 12 years of uh, obviously St Kilda and love my time there and really appreciate everything they've done. And, uh, yeah, just time for a bit of a change. So I've gone to North Melbourne and since day one I've really felt a part of it. Mm -hmm. The boys have been fantastic and the coaching staff. So I'm actually really excited to play Essendon next week to see if we are any good and to see how it's all going to play out. So Gary, it's, um, it's we, exciting times. We all know why Nick left. Right. It was because the price is right. Yeah. Oh, come on down, <laughs> Gary. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, um, <laughs> going, oh. going Honestly, to a new... Really. Anaconda, where? What? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> going to a new club, uh, the players love to see and get to know you and all your little habits, and we had a shot of your, um, your locker sent in to us. Now, you can tell us whether this is right or not, but uh, these, are, <laughs> these, are what, these are the things that are found in your locker. Some Listerine, they reckon you have a gargle before you go out, you, you have a shower, wash yourself down with baby powder, yeah. and the other one is a special deodorant that you like to use before you go out and train. Correct or not? True. It's all true. It's all true. And, and um, powder. Do you want me to justify it? No, powder yeah, please. Crotch itch. Well, like, yeah, I feel chafe is a severe issue, and if oh. you get it, you're in big strife. Yeah. So I put talcum powder on after a shower, and it keeps you dry during summer. Yes. I like to feel fresh before I train, so I use a little bit of mouthwash just before I get going. <laughs> this is extraordinary. And there's nothing wrong with a bit of cologne. No. So I put cologne on when I get up and when I. All right, while you're at go it, I've got another one. Uh, you put Justin Bieber songs on <laughs> in the gym when you're working out on your own. Is this true or false? This is true or false. Is this I put it on? Yes. True. <laughs> no. It's on a playlist. It's on a playlist, guys. It, Justin Bieber. <laughs> Bieber. 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 What? Bieber. True or false, now you wear Bieber. women's deodorant because you reckon it smells better. Oh, no. True. Oh, no. <laughs> Last one. I didn't, your wife auditioned for the Real Housewives of Melbourne <laughs> Reality TV. Oh, come on, now. Is that true or you put her up for it? No, no, she, uh, she, I did ask her that and I did hear that story and then I asked her and she said, you don't earn enough money, that's why I didn't get on. Fair enough. So, um, so you've no, been, that's definitely false, guys. So no. you've been married for, you've, you've married a, you've married a woman, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Have you? Yeah. Okay. And Nothing wrong if you hadn't. No, no, of course. And Jim, you would have seen a bit of Jim down there, the chairman, he would have welcomed you? No doubt. Uh, well, that's the only issue, Gaz, that I've probably, I mean, I've had a great time playing football and doing everything with the boys. That's the one bit I was a little bit disappointed about. Um, I did get what? a call from Gaz, uh, sorry, from uh, Jim post-season last year saying, come across, we'll do this and we'll do that for you. Yep. I remember being promised uh, games of golf at the National, yep. um, some business opportunities. Mm. And just seeing his face would have been a good start. And I've heard he's fantastic on a treadmill down the club, but yeah. haven't seen any of it since. So that's my only complaint so far. Yeah, well, it yeah. sounds all great, mate. You've jumped off a sinking ship is what you've done. <laughs> if the truth be known, mate, is yeah. what you've done is actually jumped off. Well, I don't agree with that in two reasons. I didn't jump off because people think it's sinking. And for two, I don't think... It's the St Kilda Footy Club is necessarily sinking. No, it's sinking. He, he's certainly <laughs> fitting in down at North, Jim. He's uh, magnificent. Dell, he's Fantastic. Uh, taking the boys fishing and yep. uh, he's really fitted in with the group. Have a look at him here. He uh, goes back, celebration, and I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Fair <laughs> But if you're going to impress the boys, oh, I'll tell dear. you what, that's the way to do it. What on earth are you doing? <laughs> hey? <laughs> What's oh, that, Del? That was uh, Super Bowl Monday, and oh, uh, we'd been told on the Friday again in a small group and to play at a, a touchdown play, which you did, and I caught the ball, and if you, if you got it, what sort of celebration would you do? And that was the, uh, the fishing right. uh, scenario that we played. And I think we, we pretty much won that as well, so it was not Thanks a bad day. Big yeah, I love it, Del. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, the ruse. Good work, Del. Now, a uh, great friend of yours and former coach of St Kilda and now doing a great job at Freo, Ross Lyon, not far away. But we mention him, A, because we know you're going to stay and watch what he's got to say, but also because we've got a bit of news on the Fremantle Football Club. I want you to welcome the best newsbreaker in football, Damien Barrett, everybody. Hi, <laughs> oh, Jacob. Jacob, that's... Uh...
Jamie, that news is uh, the Nathan Fife contract situation. And interestingly and very interestingly, there has been no significant conversations between player and club about the future. And as it stands tonight, there's nothing scheduled for the, the near future. What we can tell you tonight is that the stay price for Nathan Fife is going to be $800,000 a season. That's the figure that he's going to happily recommit to at the Dockers. But we believe when the talks do start that the Dockers are going to be about $200,000 short of that figure as a starting point. And official from a rival club has also told us this week that if he gets the message from Fife that he's keen to explore outside offers, that his club can and will offer $1.1 million a year for Fife. All right. Well, he is going to be a massive story throughout the course of the year. We'll put it to their coach, Ross Lyon, who's going to join us after the break. Plenty more still to come on The Footy Show. Tonight on The Footy Show, it's the eve of season 2014. Welcome to the party. Oh, hello there, Ed. We'll be previewing all the opening round action. Just let us at it. Gaz has demanded another instalment of his draftee segment. Oh yes, this is where our main man really shines. Interviewing the next crop of AFL talent. Plus, Damo's set to unleash a firestorm of footy news. Go easy on us, Purple. We get a further insight into Gaz and Sam's Kokoda trip of a lifetime. Plus, this will be bigger than Buddy's beard. Sam's first interstate street talk of the year. I'm hearing the old enforcer Tora Manui up there in Blacktown, New South Wales. Lick your nose. Do you want to lick it? Um, we'll, we'll, Inside it, we'll lick, lick. We'll about it. Read all about it. But next, Dockers super coach Big Roscoe Lyons strides on in to tell us just how Frio plan to take it one step further this year. That's right, the big one. So party hard with us, you reptiles, tonight on The Footy Show. <laughs> Pumping. The season kicks off tomorrow night, of course, at Etihad Stadium. Collingwood take on the Fremantle Dockers. Well done to Two Dogs, our main man that puts those packages together. The Fremantle Dockers are going to be involved. They played in the last weekend in September. The fourth time Ross Lyons got there and not quite been able to get across the line. Will it be this year? Please welcome the Fremantle coach, Ross Lyon. Rossi, it is great to have you, mate. We uh, jump at every opportunity we can. You're a long way away over there on the west coast, of course, but you're here to open the season tomorrow night. You must be excited. Yeah, thanks, Joe. It's great to be back. It's come around really quickly, and you know we're excited and honoured to lead off you know, 2014, and we aim to put on a pretty good show tomorrow night. I guess what everyone will be interested in is how hungry your group is. Uh, we know you would be, uh, but how have the players reacted to the disappointment of the last weekend in uh, September, and uh, how confident are you that they will bounce back? Yeah, look, on the surface, initially, obviously, there's an emotional fallout and they get together and they drown their sorrows. But uh, since they've had a great break, they come back in, you know, pretty good shape, not perfect. But from there, we've worked really hard in a short period of time. And the last three weeks, we've really trained on in, in the match, um, you know, NAB Challenge. And the game against West Coast was really very intense and it's brought us up to, to a really good point. So, yeah, we're, we're in great shape. How do you go mentally with it, Ross? You've had what, five and a half months now since that amazing day. It was only 15 points. So many big moments in the first half that if they'd gone your way, it could have been so different. Do you, are you, was sleeping OK? Do you drive in your car and just stop at a set of lights and think, you know, do you, does it get to you or not? Yeah, no, it doesn't get to me. I certainly, 
I spoke to one of the journos the other week and I, I feel I'm as um, energetic and as positive as I've ever been, really determined to try and create another opportunity. We, we all said equal and uh, look, when you lose, what hits you is how hard it is to get back there. But in saying that, we've all got a great model in front of us, Hawthorne, sustained excellence, prelim loss, grand final loss, and then got it done. So if we're a group that only can create one opportunity, well, we're not quite good enough, but we think we've got the work and, and the systems in us. Uh, amazing uh, production done by, I think it was AFL Films, uh, Gaz. And uh, we saw some great vision during that of you in the coach's room, and there's your beautiful family with you at the end of a, a devastating loss in a grand final. Talk us through these pictures. I forgot the camera was in there, that's the first thing, and I think I swore at the end of it that once I realised. But look, you know, at the end of the day, you know, your family's really important to you, and, and they, um, behind the scenes, share the ups and downs. And obviously, there's been, you know, three, there's been the draw, but, you know, one heavy loss and, and two close ones. So look, you know, it, it's, it's great that you can share that emotion and something to look back on it. And uh, Peter Dixon does a great job mm. for the AFL. And we want to bring that to the fans and the members of the AFL, because if we just close that off the whole time, they don't get to see behind the scenes. So that's where we're growing as an industry and I'm, I'm glad we can share and, you know, probably humanises me just a touch. Yep. <laughs> well, not everyone's devastated. The main people aren't devastated because they've re-signed you, so they think you are the man. Well, it's a good sign of belief. Very and good sign. Um, Look, they gave me a wonderful opportunity. I feel I've worked hard to try and deliver on that and there's a player group that gives all, they're all, gives their heart and um, I feel fully supported, so it was a no-brainer to sign. Now... Your style, the Dockers' style, is about as different as any other side in the competition. That is a fact. Has this evolved? Uh, have you studied this? <laughs> Has it evolved from watching other teams in other codes around the country and the world play? Yeah. Or is it because you have an abundance of talent or lack of it? Well, there's a lot of questions in this. <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, and we've only got is, five minutes. Uh, style yeah. is Look, there's some debatable different. stuff in there, but at the end of the day, you know, it's sort of Alan Jeans, it's in dispute. They got it. We try and get it back no. off them. And look, we, we'd like to be more pro productive on offense. There's no doubt about that. More so, productive on offense. So, yeah. nine goals. We'd like to kick a couple the more goals. The last time you were here, I showed you a picture yeah. on my phone yeah. of uh, 40 people in the forward 50 of the other mob. Yeah, it's in, if, there's only 36 on the ground. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Ross, Ross, please. There are three umpires, yeah. three uh, oh, okay. uh, umpires, a and, runners, and yeah. a, ba a boundary umpire, and I think a yeah. goal umpire. Yeah. That'd be 41. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, mate, yeah, you have be. an amazing game plan, and what you must it? have studied it. I don't even understand it, yeah. Uh, that's well, what it is, Ross. It's borrowed from um, you know, basketball. You know, on and off ball defence. Well, there you are. You know, press. Yeah, controlling that's, the ball. Well, There's all I, bits and I'm pieces of it. Yeah, and the yeah. question everyone's asking is: You've been to four grand finals, kicked nine goals, yeah. ten goals, seven goals, yeah. and eight goals. So is it as simple as trying to find a couple more? Yeah. The, look, to get back there, I wish it was that simple. Mm. But uh, there's a lot goes into that. I think if you drill in, I mean, the Saints, you know, nine were top four attack, top two for 20 weeks. So, Sam knew that. He um, didn't want to bring it up. Yeah, I thought he'd know that. <laughs> and uh, but look, we'd, at the end of the day, failures feedback. Quite simply, we need to improve. So, um, yeah, we're really confident we can improve. Ross, everyone's saying that you're behind in your preparation, and I reckon I've worked out why. Uh, it's the cricket. Tendai Mazungu. Have a look at him here at the cricket in the off season. Is where is that? That's uh, at the wacker. At the wacker, and have a look who takes the catch. It's <laughs> Tendai Mazungu. That's what's going on. So you mustn't be happy with that. Training day. I was thrilled. I was actually just seeing if he had a beer in his hand at the time. <laughs> uh, very Crowley. talented cricketer, Tendai. Elite cricketer as a junior. Yeah, right. so, yeah we Crowley encourage work-life balance. That's great to see them out. Hey, speaking <laughs> of the preparation, uh, your uh, opposition coach on Friday night, I read with interest, said it uh, might be a good time to get the Dockers. They've had three less weeks. and you know, How did you yeah. feel when you read that from Bucks? Well, I think he was um, paraphrasing me, just saying that we were three weeks less we started and uh, we need every minute or inch of pre-season. And, and I stand by that, but I, I feel the last three weeks we've really trained on in, in horse parlance <laughs> and we're ready to go. You know? Rossi, tell me whether this is fact, fiction or myth that uh, there's a suggestion around that you have monitored Hawthorne, uh, not just as you have every other side in the competition, that you've gone to work on them, their training loads, how long they've trained, um, gone really depth, in depth into the Hawthorne Footy Club? Yeah, not just Hawthorne. We, we're well-resourced clubs, so we have some people in the off-season in Melbourne that we need to keep busy. So 
we allocate them to our first four opponents and of which we play Hawthorne round three. So there's been someone watching post-Christmas their month and, you know, how long, what drills. And, and they were really impressive and they've, um, they've sort of put the wind up us a little bit how, uh, how hard they were training and how long for. So it was a stark reminder for our group to, to get into action, if no I, doubt. If I could suggest, if you want to get six weeks training into eight days, take them up the Kokoda Trail. <laughs> <laughs> Difficult task. Mm -hmm. Mate, I yeah. tell you what, uh, I'd like to see uh, Aaron Sandilands get up there. Well, the uh, sports scientists these days, Sam, put the kyber on those sort of things. It's hard to yeah, sort right. of get them across to climb mountains, isn't it, in the past? So, um, yeah, we take a conservative route and just put them around the Fremantle Oval. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're playing Friday night we go the against Fremantle. Collingwood, and this is a game yeah, yeah. I can't wait for. It's going to be an absolute crack of the pies. Take on Fremantle under the roof at Eddie Head. Collingwood had the better of Freo in recent seasons. Mind you, a lot of the last five games haven't had Ross in charge, of course, but they won four of the last five. Average of 57 points. Have a look at the side there. Pendlebury is a superstar. In fact, their on-ball brigade is very, very good. And uh, you can see why when you look down the names. And we swing across to the Fremantle Lakers. <laughs> Beaten in last year's grand final, but we're into it up to their necks. And speaking about on-ball brigades, you look at some of the names that they have when the pill goes down in the middle and they are supreme on-ball users and getters. So there's nothing wrong with that lineup. Monday, unbelievable in the grand final, especially in the second half. So we can't wait for this one. Footy's underway. Dice, what do you expect? I reckon, no, uh, that'd be a fantastic game to kick it off. But uh, I think uh, Free will take the chocolates. Um, just as a, as a whole team, I think uh, they're a great defensive unit. And um, under Ross, they've actually only lost one game since uh, at Eddie had. So there you go. Oh. It's a big one for you. I was going to ask what his record is at Eddie Had, but you've answered it. There Del. you go, mate. Um, I'm going to go for Fremantle as well. Uh, <laughs> I, I think having a month less, it does apply to the teams that didn't make the eight, but Collingwood obviously played finals last year, so you need to take that into calculation. And knowing Ross like I do, he'll make sure that his playing group is one, motivated, and two, know exactly what they have to do for, uh, for this coming season. Fine. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of Fremantle and uh, this man right here. I think he's foxing. Um, he's just letting everyone think that they're going just at the moment, but they'll be charging. Don't worry about that. Can they win the first game of the year and the last game of the year? Hope not, but maybe. And um, do you have the respect to your players, Ross? I would hope. Well, uh, you need to have a listen, because I reckon they respect you and they've been taking everything on board, so have a look here. Is that reasonable? Is that reasonable? Is that reasonable? Is that fair? Is that reasonable? Discipline versus indulgence. Save it. Save it. Save it. Uh, he always says, we're all good people, but... Everybody's good people here. It's OK. You're all good people. <laughs> we're all good people, but... And then delivers a sledge. <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate, yeah. Very accurate. Yeah. Hey, Roscoe, one of the players we just saw there, and Damien Barrett spoke about him in the first break, Nate Fife. An absolute superstar of the competition he's become and pretty important to you. Had a dominant year last year. Yep. Won the Doig medal. had been second, so stood up. Grand final day. Have you got um, 800 grand for him? I got more, but... <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, fortunately, I don't have to make those decisions. I just say, yeah, I'd like him to stay. And we respect players' decision. Um, the, the market, place they work in, it's a brutal game, so they... Whatever, whatever they get, they really deserve, and we'll be working hard to keep him. But, um, you know, whatever Nathan wants or David Mundy wants and how they want to go about it, we respect that. My job is to provide an environment that they want to stay and be a part of. So just very quickly on that, so you're going to have, you've got Fife, uh, we've heard from, and David Mundy, who's a Melbourne or a Victorian boy, he's had a contract, both superstars. Will you address it with them and say, you, whatever your decision is, fine, but we're not going to talk about it, it's going to be continually brought up, or how, how do you go about that? Really good question. If I go back to my history, even at St Kilda and Nick Rewalt, no, I never approach it with players, no. and uh, there was one player last year that commented that we think he'll stay, and I did speak to him and say, look, I reckon you need to go to that player and say, look, I shouldn't have bought in, it's none of my business, no. and just respect them going about it. So, no, I don't buy in. Again, I just back in. How I work with that player, don't compromise because they're out of contract, just coach them the same way and, and hopefully we're an environment in the team that they want to be a part of. Ross, did you try and get Nicky Dell to your side over the break? Look, it was considered, it was very difficult um, thinking coaching Nick again. He's a very special player, he, he was a star <laughs> of St Kilda. From my end, it's still hard to comprehend he's not there, but we understand the world we're operating in. So, 
Um, yeah, he's special. Did I try to get him? Uh, we, we did consider Nick. We couldn't afford him. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it all. and no one can take you off better than him. Yeah, that's he's outstanding. He's yeah. outstanding. Although some of that stuff I saw pre-show is uh, mm. giving me an insight to Nick. That <laughs> now, <laughs> you, you said you've studied the first four sides you played. Obviously, you've studied Collingwood. Uh, what have we... Oh, I know you're not going to let anything go here, but you've obviously yeah. studied how to beat them. And I feel almost treacherous in not picking the Dockers, seeing as you're sitting here, but that would be weak if I thought Collingwood would win. What did you find out about Collingwood that you didn't already know? Well, I think it's on the table. They're, they're changing game style. They're, they've been a high kick, um, handball to kick team, the ratio, a kick less, handball more. They've got a lot of young players coming through. And I don't know if it's a rebuild, but it's a change. We, we thought when they won in 2010, I think they were the ninth youngest premiership team and we're all sort of um, chirping about a dynasty. So there's been some things, significant change and they're, they're changing their personnel and how they play. So, so I, gonna, I think we're all a little bit surprised. They're going to crowd them what's up gonna and be there. bunch them up and confuse them. And that's just, the aim, Sam. That's the aim is just to... Here's a tip, Foss. Oh, well, as I say, I'm not going to tip against... Well, on, well I'm going to tip the pies because I just think... <laughs> I just think it's patronising to say, because he's here. Well, considering last week you said they're not going to make the eight, they're, well, off, I don't think they're off to a fly well, if they don't not bowl over three out of my Well, that just shows you how sincere I am. Uh, <laughs> hey, we, uh... I, I mind you, I've had to put some money on it. Oh, <laughs> listen uh, to this. No, we're going for the pies and that's it. All right, well, I'm going for Frio, and what we do are. need to do tonight is uh, thank Ross Lyon, getting we, coaches on. He's, uh, he's hard work sometimes, but every time he's available, he's great to the footy show, and we wish him all the best, not only Rossi for tomorrow night, but also for the season ahead. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. All right, we need to get to a break, and as we do, let's just acknowledge some of the people that make this show possible. I start with Nissan, who are celebrating their 80th birthday. Thank you to Nissan. Hot timber and hardware, hardware, hardware store of the year for the second year in a row. Thank you very much. We go to a break. Plenty more after this on the footy show. Show thanks to sportsbet.com.au over 250 markets on every AFL match. And we love having Repco on board for the very first time. What an auto store ought to be. So magnificent ongoing support for the footy show. And I tell you, this man has started like a house on fire. He just... He'll keep it going now because it's time for Sam's Mailbag. You'll think this is a gratuitous plug, but it's not. No? Last mm. week, yep. I mentioned this brand of underwear, mm. and we have been inundated. Have so, you? so the offer. Well, we, as a matter of fact, we've nearly sold out. Oh, yeah. So we're making it. This is smarter Sam underwear. We're right. making it exclusive now. Right. We're not selling it. I've given this instruction to Andrew at Jerry's, which is in Barclay Street, St Kilda, <laughs> which is where you can buy it. Yes. If there's any left, we're not selling them to people with tattoos. Oh. <laughs> Or people who say H. Oh, so no. if you fit to that category, don't ask for anything. All right, what have you got uh, in your mail, man? And, and yes. Alex Lepi is fighting Le yeah. Ivan Vladimir, rather, Kichko, yes. for the world heavyweight boxing title of the world in, in Russia. You told us last week. And, yeah. I, and I asked Alex to come on, but yes. he's over, someone said he was over in Siberia training, and then they said someone was, said it was Sunraysia, and oh. then they said well, it was Well, let Suburbia. us know when that's on. That uh, it's, on it's on. It's on. When? <laughs> Pay main About event. six weeks, isn't it? Tell yes. me, what's it called? Main event? Pay yes. pay-per-view, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that. And the other thing oh is... God, oh, God, All right, well, come week? on. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Greg Evans said he'd marry those two people who got <laughs> oh, engaged oh, in the no. balloon. He said he'd jump out of a plane and they could get married, <laughs> parachuting oh, no. to Earth. Taking up all your mailbag No, yeah, that, that, this is from Olga of Point Cook. Yep. Right. Love the fact, John. John. You are back celebrating 21 years, but disappointed you kicked off mailbag last week by showing those idiots with the champagne cork. Uh, oh! oh. oh. God damn it. oh. Silly. Oh. Uh, silly. <laughs> Olga says, please don't feel you have to lower yourself to the masses every week. Oh, no, we never do that. <laughs> show, something else for, show something else for pity's sake, she says. Fuck. Okay? There's a convention. <laughs> 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 Learn from Ellen. <laughs> Cute videos about kids and animals are the way to go. 
Okay, here's a kid talking about a frog. Sassy frog. Sassy <laughs> frog. <laughs> frog. Yeah. Oh, no. Ellen who, incidentally? Yes. Ellen DeGeneres. On the show. Channel Ellen. 9 on Channel 9, midday. Yep. What else? Yep. Well, all right. <laughs> well, and one final gripe, says Olga. Olga. <laughs> Stop blabbing on about a cover-up between the AFL and Asada. This is a cover-up, she says. Well, that's a squirrel bearing his nut in a Burmese mountain dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is. <laughs> Oh, I've got a dog like that. That's not bad. Uh, What's he doing? That's a squirrel burying his nut in a <laughs> Burmese mountain dog. Thank God, I thought it was something else. Oh, is that, is that, that what it was doing? That's what it was doing. Hey, uh, Gary. Speaking of cover-ups, Jim. We <laughs> have discovered one in the off-season <laughs> that, that, that has rocked this show staggered. to its core. Certainly Gary and I were staggered. We were sent a copy mm. of the Sporting Globe from 1978, it's May 31. Oh. Here's the front page. Look at it. Smoking Sam, there he is. <laughs> he's got a stogie as long as a 30 inch bloody ruler. Jim, that's the front. And he's got the front covered. Well, and then, so we thought that was funny enough, and then we switched it around the back to see an exclusive back page article titled Big Sam Says. Oh, hey. <laughs> Look at him. Big Sam Says. <laughs> so, of course, this is a whole page, Gary. Yeah, so that was your own column. Yeah, the, don't the ever weekly. complain about the stretcher coming on. Hey, or... we've not seen this Big is... Sam Says before. No one's ever heard of Big Sam Says. <laughs> and so we want <laughs> Big Sam Says. <laughs> <laughs> so what we want to do... You've it... taken over letters, have what you? What we will do is we'll revive Big Sam Says. So oh, before you've got shit, something good to say, That's it. we will announce it. So carry oh. on. Pete Smith ready in the voiceover booth. Wayno of Rye, Sammy, you're a cack. That's what he says. What was more embarrassing, you breaking down in the Burnley Tunnel? This is me there you are. Yes. Or last. Yes. You would be amazed while I'm driving that car around since last week oh. how many people sling shit at me while I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> or last year when you forgot the names of all your old teammates. Now, <laughs> Samuel. <laughs> Samuel. <laughs> you didn't remember those. So what was more embarrassing? Let's find out what Big Sam says. Big Sam says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this... That's your own intro. Oh, That's when you then you That's say it. Then you oh, say thank it. you, Gary. Uh... <laughs> All right, and then, and then, then Wayno says, did you ever apologise properly to your old cat's Teammates. No, I haven't formally apologized, apologized, Wayno, but for fear it would go something like this. I see this for the first time as everyone else. I have no idea what's coming. Do you see this before? <laughs> I never know when I'm on or when I'm meant to speak. <laughs> is that it? Oh, that was little Jimmy. Nice. Uh, <laughs> thumbs up, Jimmy. This is from Kaz of Lee and Gather. Mr. Newman. Oh, hello. I am a friend of dancer, entertainer Spandy Andy. Here's Spandy Andy. Yep. Spandy came onto your show last week expecting to appear on camera performing a routine for Dane Swan's birthday. A routine he has spent an entire week rehearsing. But you bastards, says Kaz of Leon Gather, <laughs> you <laughs> bastards didn't even bother to show him on camera. Not entirely true. We did see a glimpse of him, uh, Kaz. Oh, no. That was Spandy. <laughs> <laughs> That was it, was it? Apparently, says Kaz, oh, no. uh, says we're bastards. Uh, <laughs> that's how we please roll in get... Langatha. What's that? That's, that's how we roll in Langatha, Fox. Are you, you you're from Langatha? Bloody oath, mate. You wear a Spandy dice? <laughs> I'm not, but there you go. <laughs> well, Kaz says, please get Spandy back and give him a second chance. Well, I think it's... Yeah. It's only fair that we should firstly, before we do that, Gary, yeah. find out what Big Sam says. Oh, oh no. Shit.
Big Sam says. Oh, it's done. It's done. This is All right, we got to get him out. Oh, get him out. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. Get him Maybe that's why we didn't show so much as Mandy last week. He ought to be a part of this set. Turn me over to the Melbourne Victorians. We're not on this, Mandy. Come on. That's why you wouldn't get on. That's Mandy Abbey. That's Mandy. All right, let's have a look at the next game. Gold Coast take on the Richmond Footy Club Saturday night at Metricon Stadium. Gold Coast Suns, well, they are on the march. And uh, they're a side to be reckoned with, particularly up there at Metricon Stadium. Going to be a very difficult team to beat. Their side here, Jimmy Boy has got three new players, Sean Lemons, Clay Cameron and Jack Martin, a highly rated youngster who, to, uh, who wasn't able to play last year, drafted as a 17-year-old. Here's the tight. Finished fifth last year, 15 wins, seven losses, went down in their preliminary final, but they are back and, um, well, let's have a look at this. This is a side I think is going to contend again, boys. Koch and Delidio, Conker, Vickery's in good form. Not sure I can see the push-up king there, though. No, which he's not there, push-up. He's, not, uh, no, he's not had blank. that knee, so he's not quite right. But this is a big game. Difficult going up there, boys. I think uh, Dice is going to be one of the harder road trips going up to take on Gold Coast. No doubt, yeah. The Gold Coast, are, um, they're certainly coming along as a, as a young side. Um, I think their, their midfield's outstanding. Uh, the likes of O'Meara, Prestia... Uh, Swallow's running through there again and, and headed by Gary Ablett, but I think uh, I think Gold Coast will get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now. Uh, I think both clubs have really built, you know, really well over the last couple of years, particularly Richmond. have had more wins each season for about the last three seasons. Love their NAB Cup form. Not that you can always read a lot into it, but I like the way they're going about their football, and I think Richmond will be another successful team this year. Yeah. Win this one. Shane. Yeah, it's very tough. I spoke to Campbell Brown a week ago who said that this young man, Jack Martin, is the most extraordinarily talented footballer he's ever seen. Well, I know, which is a very big call because he's played with a few good players. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, Lance Franklin, <laughs> Sue Rioli, Gary Ablett, and then to come out and say that this kid's number one, it's, yeah. uh, it's a big effort. But Richmond have to win this. I know they've got a few out, but uh, they're certainly... Uh, hopefully from the loss of the, the finals last year against the Blues, it spurred them on during pre-season. Right, and right, I've got right. a feeling they're going to not only make the finals, but really... Have a crack this year, the Tigers. So the Tigers will win. Of course. So you honestly reckon that when you lose an important game at the end of last year, yep. you dwell on it over the summer and this will be the difference next it's week. It's going to motivate you and keep you ticking along and you'll learn a great deal from it. Oh, hello. Oh, they're back. The certain yeah, cards are back. Cards back. Well, and you know what it was going to be? It was going to be whoever got it wrong was going to shave their heads bald. What? But you two pulled out. You wouldn't have your sh heads shaved bald. The only person who agreed, agreed well, with it was it, the mammoth. It'd take too long. For yeah, it's it's right. fat Bill, because he is bald. What, so, <laughs> so you wouldn't uh, have your head shaved bald? Uh, well, well, this is a certainty. Who are you going for? I'm going for the Suns. Are you? Oh. Suns? Oh. So what's the penalty? Hey? So what's the penalty? So you're saying if Richmond beat the Suns, you're going to shave your head? No, because no, you pulled it. You said you wouldn't do it. Well, we said right. it wasn't fair because if Gary did, it'd already grow back by the next <laughs> week. <laughs> very good luck. Very and uh, Jim, your is some interest for interest's sake, you are in it no, this year. No, I'm not. I'll, I'll, I'll go in it. Then. I'm in. I'm I'll in. go in it this week. I'll right. go in it this week this, too. No, no, this, this round. Yeah, this, this round. round. She's over two weeks. This first round. That's right. It's only for this round. All right. I'll pick Hawthorne. Picked I pick Gold all four. No, no, so when you get one wrong for the year, you for shave your head. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, who are you to be? Well, hey, once the challenge is done, we get a new challenge. 
Oh, do we? Says <laughs> 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 you. Who said just making it up on the spot? You, oh, you, no. when you, you get one wrong. Up. We, how many times did we have to go into the house? Oh, I don't know. How many did we? <laughs> uh, he's not. He's, I'm, I'm going for. Uh, I pray that the, oh. that Gold Coast win, but I think Richmond will. But if they do, Gold Coast win. Fossil's here is coming off. No. Oh. Yes. The no, he's picked Gold Coast to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the Suns, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Is that what they're called? So, oh, yeah, I'm praying that Richmond win. So that's shaved head, yeah? Yes, for Sam. For like Sam, yeah. absolutely. Now, uh, as long as everyone else is in it. Home Timber and Hardware, the Big One catalogue is back for us. Uh, it's bigger and better than ever. Packed with big products, of course, big brands, big deals. Uh, help you get stuck into your big projects. The Home Big One catalogue on sale now until Sunday the 30th of March. <laughs> Get into your local home, timber and hardware store, and pick yourself up. A big bargain from the Big One catalogue. Sam's going to be a bald, tattooed freak by the end of this year. We're going to take a break. Damien Barrett's going to join us after this. Footy show, some of the best young talent in the land still to join us, but right now it's time to catch up with all the footy news and the best newsman in the business, bar none, is Damien Barrett. And he joins us. Welcome, Damien. Thank you, Gaz. We'll uh, start tonight with James Hurd, who heads overseas tomorrow for a business course that's going to cost him and his footy club more than $100,000. He won't be returning until the middle of the year. Now, Hurd had not spoken publicly since his AFL sanction last year until Mitch Cleary of the footy show caught up with him earlier this week. And Mitch's first question here that you're about to see is he asked Heard when it was that he was leaving Australia. Uh, later this week. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to heading away and getting over overseas. Um, yeah, we are heading, looking forward to getting over as a family, so it yeah. should be good. Where's it taking you? Uh, we're going to a few different spots: Singapore first, then France, then um, up to Russia. So we're looking forward to it. Yeah. And this is all in the view of getting back for after your ban in uh, August 25. Yeah. No, we're we'll back coaching uh, towards the end of this year. Yep, and that's back in the coach's box with Bomber? Yeah, look, I mean, obviously Bomber's the coach for 2014 and I'll be coming back as the coach for 2015, but um, looking forward to, you know, helping the club in any way I can when I get back. Yep. Will you be back in any form in the finals for this year? I'll be back at the club, yeah. I mean, as I said, Bomber's the coach for 2014 and I'll be back coaching in 2015. So. And you'll be in the coach's box for the finals this year? Well, it's up to, it's up to what Bomber really needs, so we'll wait and see. Good. Thanks, James. Right. Thanks, mate. James heard earlier this week, there has been a significant development tonight in the Essendon Asada case. Danny Weedler from Channel 9 in, in uh, Sydney tonight broke the story that the dank has been issued by Asada with show cause letters relating to 34 anti-doping issues. Now, we've spoken to uh, um, Stephen Dank tonight ourselves and he refused to comment to the footy show. Mitch Cleary had also had a, had a chance to speak to him. Didn't want to yeah, comment no, tonight. Side. That's only uh, a couple of hours ago tonight. We have spoken to Greg Stanton, Stephen Dank's lawyer. Greg Stanton has told us tonight that this move is Asada, and this is his quote, passing the buck, that they haven't interviewed Stephen Dank and they've chosen not to issue infraction notices. They've asked us to show cause and what he also said on the record was this is a long way from being over. What it means, in, in an absolute nutshell, is that a body independently of Asada will now assess where this matter goes next. Show cause is a trendy term, worry about. Yep. What about the players? That's For me, that's the only interest that lies in this, is, is how it affects the players. Should they be more or less worried as a result of the story that Danny broke this afternoon? I don't think it changes that situation at all, Gaz. People, very senior people at WADA, have felt for some time now that this has dragged on for so long that the best way to take this to the next step, and ultimately the final step, is to get an independent body in. Issuing a show cause letter as opposed to an infraction notice allows it now to go to an independent body. Stephen Dank, as we know, have said, has said he wants that to be the case. He's now got that opportunity. Greg Stanton, the lawyer, Gaz, also confirmed, as, as best as he knew it to be, that the 30, 34 anti-doping issues, they relate specifically to Essendon, not Cronulla. Right. So that, that's 34 issues that he has to show cause why he should not face an infraction Very notice. Very quickly, the appointment of a judge about three weeks ago, is this... Uh, expediated things. Uh, there's, there's absolutely no doubt about that. As you said, a judge has been put in charge of this case now. There, there is no coincidence that two weeks after that appointment that these 
show cause letters have been issued tonight. Bit to play out though. Um, caught up with uh, the newly elected St Kilda president, uh, Peter Summers, during the week. Now he's boldly declared that his team will win its second premiership inside six years. It's comments that are going to certainly divide opinion. We'll take a look at them now. This is Peter Summers talking to the footy show this week when he was asked to expand on the football department goals that are contained in a club mission statement which is titled Road to 2018. By 2018, we intend to be a top four side who is regularly competing for a flag. Uh, now, obviously, if you're going to compete, um, you know, it's, a, it's a business of winning and, and we're, we're going to be bold and, and make a statement that by 2020 we won our second Premiership Cup. Taking any other approach is selling the playing group and our members short. But if, you, if you're going to be, if you're going to be a comp in a competition where there is one prize given, go for it. Yeah. Say you're going. He set the bar high. Um, look, I think it's lofty. Uh, top four in four years and another flag inside six. But Brennan Gale made some very big statements when he took over the Richmond Footy Club and mm. aimed for 75,000 members and top four position. And at the time, we thought that was lofty, but they aren't far away. Well, they've won one club in there, one premiership in there, 117 years in the AFL. I admire it. And he's presented that statement tonight to a club function which has launched the 2014 season. What about Peter Jackson's tenure at Melbourne and Paul Ruse as yeah, a coach? Yeah, Peter Jackson himself has opened discussions with the new chairman of the Footy Club, or the president, Glenn Bartlett. And and that is interesting in itself. His contract ends. I believe he will recommit to Melbourne Footy Club, Peter Jackson, as CEO, when that time comes. The club wants Paul Roos to do the same. He, at the moment, has got a two-year plus one-year option at the moment. But what Peter Jackson says, and you're about to see it right now, he guarantees that the Footy Club will have in place, by the start of the next pre-season, the man who will replace Paul Roos. I don't want to start putting pressure on Roosie or start getting into some public debate about, you know, will he be here for two or three years. Um, I just want him to be really happy about the decision he's made coming to work each day and, and knowing he's done the right thing. If we do that for most of this year, I think the rest will take care of itself. But your plan is, before next pre-season, to have a success at the Paul Roos in place? We would want to understand who's in that role um, towards the end of this football season, absolutely. Peter Jackson there, of course, uh, CEO of the Melbourne Football Club and the AFL Hall of Fame Purple yep. always raises questions, especially with eligible players that um, maybe are going to be causing the judges some... Sleepless some nights, angst. would yeah. that be the right way to put it? The Hall of Fame, uh, JB, met today for the f committee, met today yeah. for the first time, and, and of the potential 2014 inductees, there is an interesting name, and that name is Ben Cousins. He has officially reached the eligibility clauses, having been retired now for three seasons. Yeah. His name was discussed today. It will be discussed in future meetings of that Hall of Fame committee. I don't expect him to get in this year, but he's eligible and uh, he's been discussed. And before you go, James Frawley, your free agent at the end of this season, uh, in your discussion with Peter Jackson, did you bring that up? I get the feeling Melbourne's very confident they'll retain him, Gaz. His, his um, unrestricted status as a free agent was, is simply because his contract has been smoothed out over four years. The big money came for him early in that. Right now, the money that he's getting in 2014 does not place him amongst the top earners at Melbourne, hence He's unrestricted when it comes to that. Melbourne, though, very confident that he stays. Did I hear James Frawley right when he said that he'll re-sign when Paul Roos re-signs? I have heard that floating around. No, I haven't that. seen him say it. <laughs> he did say that. you got to love that, don't you? <laughs> Thank Damien Barrett for us, everyone. Fantastic. As always, Purple. Brilliantly done. Now, all big footy shows, of course, already on and coming back. The Sunday footy show this Sunday. All conquering, of course. Hutchie's going to be dominating that one. Brendan Goddard's going to be on hand this weekend. Dan Hannabry as well as Guy McKenna. Stephen Coonahan drops in the Sunday yarn. And a special bury the hatchet on the game's most brutal contest, the Battle of Britain. That's coming up from 11.30 this Sunday. You must see that. There they are, the two boys. Reese and, and Donald McDonald. McDonald. Yeah, oh, she was on over there, Gary. Yeah. And then footy class. Oh, off to a ripping start. It was There was angst. In studio, gluing everything I love about that magnificent show. Uh, the biggest story is always breaking the AFL agenda, the hottest topics. Must see television on Monday night, footy classified. So get stuck into both of those. Now, Gary. As well as it all getting a little tense on Monday night, which I loved, well, of course, because yeah, that's on. the backbone of that magnificent show. Actually got labelled a clown and a fraud. Oh, that's what I heard. Um, I also <laughs> did see... Something I couldn't believe, and that don't, was... Don't bring it up. Well, Hutchie had something growing on his face. On, um, what well, was, what yeah. was this, Gary? Well, this is our, our main man here, and um, we tried to get away with it. 
by uh, covering it. It trended on Twitter. <laughs> Australia wide. It did. And, it, and it, well, he, he's had an infection, Jim, right. on his chin. It was a lot bigger than that. And, right. Um, he took a, lot, a heavy course of antibiotics. I'm saying this in all seriousness. Intravenous. Intravenously. And it did, and he's almost over it. So that right. is a very good news. So um, oh, that's he's going to oh, be fine. That's fine. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <What? laughs> oh. Well, I went out to... Um, <laughs> I went out to uh, just uh, say no hard feelings about last <laughs> week with Craig. Remember when we showed his stomach uh, with Rebecca Judd? And, yes. I thought, and he was out uh, hijacked. He just hijacked a snack truck out the back and he had his head in the, in the middle of a turkey out there just eating its gizzards from the inside. And I said, mate, I saw you on Footy Classified. Luckily, as I embraced him and gave him a bear hug, luckily it's not contagious, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that's like I felt, felt, felt oh, good no. about it. Yeah, you've, oh. you've seen the, court, oh. the affliction. Oh. Hey? What, what, what have you got on your, your chin there for? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what have I got? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, shit. Is that right? <laughs> Is it it's flared up already? I think it has. <laughs> I think it's flared up, and I hope you want to get onto that pretty quickly because um, oh, it, no, can get very, it can get oh. it's, it's got what? stuff dripping out of it, Force. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> it's not one thing, it's the other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go and see, get that scene doing the ad break. I didn't really we'll take, have a, that lamp take a break. Plenty more still to come <laughs> yeah. on the footy show. <laughs> still to come tonight, oh, yes. Gary Lyon and only Gary Lyon. Take us through some more top-notch draftees, including the D's budding superstar, Jesse Hogan. Croft brings us all the big hangers from footy legends last year. More of the boys on the Kokoda track over summer. Be tired to wipe the sweat out of the eyes. And Sam takes street talk to GWS country. We're asking about the Sydney Swans and Buddy Franklin. Have you heard of him? Yeah, mate, no good. He's, well, he's, he's what? That's sure to be champagne stuff force. Stay with us on the footy show. And we got uh, met by um, our porters with the um, guitar, and they sang a, oh, I think an original. A lilting melody. Well, welcome to Kaki. Ah! Still Man. more. Ah, oh, nice finish. Yeah, yeah, ha! Fantastic. Sam now would like to sing a return, <laughs> a little no, bit of uh, witchcraft. No, I wouldn't. Come on. No, I wouldn't. I no, would love it. No, shut up. <laughs> Gary actually blew a fetlock at the, one of the camps and he blew one of his shoes out. <laughs> Terence, I want to congratulate you. <laughs> we don't believe Gary is going to last the distance. Ah. He's suffering pain and we've seen how he handles it. So they summoned some native men some uh, New Guinea fuzzy wuzzies to come out of the bush with a makeshift stretcher. Terribly humorous. Champagne from the boss man. <laughs> I didn't think that something so humorous could occur on this trip. No, no, lower me down. Hey, hey, down, down. Very funny, very funny, very funny, very funny. You can't escape it. The New Guinea is still doing stretcher jumps. Very funny. Right, now, where'd they pick me up? Part of the journey next week, of course. What a what a venture! Could, could I just say that um, when those uh, they're called Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels, those natives, yep. when they came out of the bush, don't forget this was about a fortnight after some fellow hikers had been macheted to death. <laughs> Uh, up in the north of New Guinea, Gary thought uh, that was it. We were being attacked by marauders and his sphincter, you couldn't <laughs> ram a knitting needle up with a jackhammer. He got that tight. For a small moment, I was He thinking. thought, God, what's happened? No, but they're the friendliest people of all. Well, they were. Very they? funny from Sam organising uh, a stretch. No doubt, How no, no, I liked it, Gary. It was my favourite bit. What about that? What have you been impressed by? Yeah, I, I respect uh, what you've done there, Sammy, but... You're the only guy that's ever walked it the way you're talking and acting. Like oh. You're the only guy that's <laughs> ever done the hike. Oh, here's a bloke before training puts gels and salves <laughs> and, <laughs> and liniments and amulets and trinkets and 
We ate for eight days salada biscuits. I had a gecko in between one of them. <laughs> it's filling. Just on one day. You've got... You're smelling like the curtains in a gypsy fortune teller's parlour. <laughs> We're just about dead. Just, we were. Oh, it was courageous God. by you. What about, what, what about you, courageous. you rangy stickin' sick? What are you laughing at? <laughs> Hey, I'm very impressed, mate. Thank you. <laughs> well, I should hope so. All right, let's get stuck into well, the next uh... game of footy. Carlton take on Port Adelaide. <laughs> Eddie had Sunday night. For all the Blues, they don't have the superstar Chris Judd, but they do have Dale Thomas for the first time across from the Maggies to play for the Blues and some big names we're going to speak to soon from that club as well are listed in the squad. Is what it is at the moment. Port Adelaide, very nice finalists last year, had a win, of course. And look at the forward line here. Westhoff, Schultz, Butcher, the big towers, and then Monfries, Hartland, Gray. There's some talent in there. And Trav Boak is an absolute star. Croft, what's happening here? Uh, it's going to be a ripper. I know uh, the Blues had a lot of surgery over the pre-season, but uh, I've got a feeling they'll start really well. Port Adelaide, uh, terrific last year, but um, I've just got a feeling the Blues will get off to the perfect start. <laughs> Yeah, looking forward to this game, Shane. Um, both had fantastic years last year, so I'm interested to see how they both go this year. But because the game's at Eddie had, I'm going to go for Carlton. Right? Yeah, fair enough. Um, no, I like the look of both sides, but I especially like the look of Port Adelaide with their young guys, uh, Ollie Wines, Chad Wingard, and the new guy, Jarman Impey. He's had a fantastic pre-season, so I think Port will get the, get the job done. Well, obviously, we like the look of Port, and they were fantastic, but my goodness me, if uh, Carlton are going to uh, step to the plate, <laughs> this would be the game, because Mick Malthouse will be desperate. Gary, I'm giving you this. Pick a certainty out of this. Oh, you? Oh, you wouldn't pick a certainty? Not in this game. No. no, well, I'm going for Carlton on this particular yeah. day. Uh, speaking of Carlton, Gary, yeah. uh, 150 years, uh, this is a uh, magnificent club celebrating, and they've got a Guernsey, commemorative Guernsey. And uh, it comes in a beautiful box too, by the way. They're going to wear this in round 7, 13 and 23. It pays homage to the fantastic jersey they wore from 27 to 97. So you've got all oh, the big uh, logo there. Made in Australia. Uh, Nike have done a magnificent job of this, by the way. Available uh, through the Carlton Shop at Busy Park. And uh, there's the back of it, which I don't think is any different. Oh, no, down the bottom it is. They're all a premiership. So three times this year, Gary, they're wearing this jumper, the Blues. All right, that's great news. So, um... Oh, my uh, what we do need to do now no, is... No, no, no. Who did you tip? Um, I've tipped Port Adelaide. But um, what we are going to do is acknowledge the very tragic and oh, yeah. sudden passing of Dean Bailey through the course of this year. Dean Bailey's contribution to footy was immense uh, as a player, first of all with Essendon, 53 games, and then made his mark as a coach at Mount Gravatt, Essendon, Port Adelaide. I sat on a panel that appointed him coach of the Melbourne Footy Club and then over at Adelaide. His uh, contribution through development has been enormous. You won't hear a bad word said about this man and it is a very, very sad occasion and tonight we'd like to uh, give our condolences to his wife Karen and sons, Darcy and Mitchell. Welcome back to the Footy Show. This is part two of a very popular segment. It is our introduction to the most talented young footballers in the country. Their debut on television, if you don't like, so, if you don't mind. So be kind to them. We're going to start with Essendon's number one pick. Zach Merritt joins us. Welcome, Zach. Hey. Hey. Have a look at this man. Welcome, mate. How are you? Thank you. Thanks. Going well. Pick How number well. 26. Join your brother Jackson at the Essendon Footy Club. He must have made it welcome for you. Yeah, he's very good. Obviously, I um, was very excited to join him. It was just like back in the old days at Cobden. Um, yeah, he made it very good for me. Uh, very helpful. We spoke to Jackson. He said you, you annoyed him something shocking for the first couple of weeks. You weren't quite sure what to wear, where to go. Was that the case? Yeah, and no, I did annoy him a lot. I seen probably 15 sex messages a day, and um, yeah, it was very annoying for him. But yeah, it was very grateful for his help. Yeah, uh, you actually played Friday week. The Bombers take on the Kangaroos. What's the chances? I'm not too sure yet. I'll see what Dice is over there, but um, yeah, hopefully see how we go. And I was very interested to read that your favourite show is Fast and the Furious, episode six. Oh, I don't mind that. Yeah, it was pretty good, pretty entertaining. What about the other five? <laughs> I had to pick one out of six, so go with that one. Yeah, he's not a big man, Jim, but he's no. very quick and very talented, and I the like Bobbers are going to love having him in their side. Good luck, mate. Zach Merrick, Dan, join us. Right now, here we go for Carlton's 
supporters here. First pick, pick number 13, if you don't mind, Patrick Pripsko. Patrick, how are you, how are you mate? Yeah, good, thank you. Look at the size of this boy. Get in here a bit closer. 190 centimetre midfielder. You just shot up uh, over the last couple of years, is that right? Yeah, about two and a half years ago, I was probably mid 170s, so. Um... Yeah, you can say I've shut up a He's bit. He's got you covered, Gary. He has at the moment, Jim, but uh, we've got a lot in common, you may not realise. Cooks is a big farm boy. He comes from a big farming district, loves his farm. I'm a farmer, uh, farm boy as well. What do you run on the farm? Uh, we used to run a fair bit of sheep, but now we just stick to cropping, um, free, free the old man up a bit. So, uh, a bit shearing? Yeah, we used to. <laughs> but, yeah, try to stick away from that. Yeah. Not, not a big fan. Any crops going? Um, he just said that, you dick. Shut up, Jim. <laughs> yeah, no, we've got, got a fair bit of crops, so yeah. hopefully get a bit of rain this year. What sort of track are you running? <laughs> no, we, we stick with the case, so yeah, the case is pretty reliable. With a what? The case tractor. I'm a John Deere man myself. Uh, no, uh, the yeah. other thing, you love, you love, you love, your, pig, wanker, you love your pig hunting, <laughs> and that is something that I know a fair bit about. So are you using the dogs or are you out with the guns? Uh, a bit of both. I uh, like to get out with the dogs and uh, chase them out of the scrub, then uh, hopefully get them out in the open. Dogs and crossbow me when I get out. And out <laughs> uh, midfielder at the Carlton Footy Club, uh, you Diesel Williams style, they tell me. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great honour to be compared to him, but um, obviously I don't really like to compare myself to many players, but um, yeah, I can take a few traits from him. It'd be, yeah, it'd be awesome. Uh, he's a good looking young man, a good size too. Good luck no, to you, Patrick. You. Patrick, yeah. Patrick yeah. Yeah. Footy Club. Wait, wait, sit there, Christian. Back, go back, go back, 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 back. Got to give this man an introduction. Come on. A few more revered numbers in the <laughs> AFL competition than the number three at the Melbourne oh. Footy Club, Jim, if you don't mind. <laughs> Clint Bartram, Clint Bizzle, and now Christian Salem joins us from the Melbourne Footy Club. <laughs> Welcome, young man. Thanks. What a great thrill and honour it is to be joining this magnificent football club. Yeah, it is. Obviously, um, coming off the last couple of years, um, refreshed group, new coaches, so, yeah, really looking forward to it. How have you fitted in down at Demon Land under Ruzi? He's a breath of fresh air, they tell me. Yeah, no, it's been good. Um, obviously, we've got, like, four Brighton and Grumman boys down there now, so... They've looked after us well, but the locker next to Watsy, so it's been good. Gary, yeah. yes. they tell me that the real likeness between you and this young man is not only the number three, but the fact that he's equally hairy. <laughs> <laughs> is that true, Christian? At 18, you've got the body hair going nicely? Nah, not really, just, just a bit here. He's got a nice cover, Jim. <laughs> uh, that's all right. I tell you what, he has been described as one of the very best kicks that come out of the under-18 competition. Where, what position would you like to play, mate? Um, oh, obviously, early on, you take what you get. Um, Played my first game on the weekend, playing half-back and wing, so, yeah, you never know. Don't mind forward. And the old, who, who down there at um, Melbourne's taking you under the wing? Um, oh, I guess Not we sort you. of work with you in the line, so down forward, um, sort of had a bit to do with it, Burnsy. Um, yeah, and a few others, it's been good. What did you say, well, sir? Not you, why don't you go down and give him a hand? He's got again? your old number, why don't you give him a leg up? Any day booze, I'll be there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> Christian Salem's going to be a great player for the Melbourne Football Club. The North Melbourne Footy Club, hey. their first pick was a father, son, Luke McDonald. He joins us, the son of Donald, of course, who was a star and is still at the North Melbourne Footy Club. And uh, I'm not going to be shy with questions here, Jim. A confident young man, Luke. I've known you for a long time. How's things? You've been at that footy club since you're about four years of age. Yeah, since about um, 2006. So I wasn't four, but I was a bit older than that. But, um, but yeah, been there a while, so it's good to be uh, finally on the list. And of course, uh, the speculation is that you went as a father son. Now, I was talking to Nicky Dell before, Dell. Um, he thought he may have gone a bit higher. Yeah, the story goes that he was a little bit flat that he went number eight father son, that he thought if he was in the draft like everybody else, he was definitely a first pick because uh, <laughs> boy, didn't quite fit that bill for him. But uh, no, he's, he's a good kid. And Settled I, in well? Yeah, very well. I think. For, uh, for a first year as good as I've ever seen. All right, best mates with Jack Billings. Jack Billings on last week. I want you to rate his performance. Oh, look, it was about a two. I was pretty flat with it, to be honest. But um, told me he was going to do a gag or something like that. But, um, yeah, nothing surfaced. So. Well, you got one for us then. This is the opportunity. Look down the barrel. <laughs> no. no, I got no gag. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Well, tell me whether this is true. Socially, they say you're very confident. This came across my desk. A young lady you were talking to recently, and your uh, parting line to her was, how would you like to go to the Brownlow next year? <laughs> Is there any truth in that, young uh, Luke? Um, well, at work, she's my girlfriend now, oh. so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't complain. Hey, mate, you had a great year in the VFL last year. Hopefully, debut uh, very, very shortly, and it's going to be a long career for all the Kangaroos. Good luck. Luke McDonald. <laughs> and this man here, taking oh, number mate. two in last That's year's draft. Yeah. He had to play well, VFL footy and bide his time, and the Demons are very much looking forward to Jesse Hogan, who joins oh, yeah. us here. Look at him in Jesse. Yes. All right, yes.
Well, no, I'm going good. Nice to see you, big fellow. Uh, we're excited. We saw you against the Cats. Like you were ripping it to shreds, but you've had a little bit of a back issue. Um, yeah, a little bit of a setback, you know, nothing too serious, but um, obviously not ideal timing, but hopefully be back in the early rounds, round two or three, so. So what has been the diagnosis right now? Do we know exactly? Um, it's a bit odd. You can't really uh, get scans on it. It's more of a symptomatic, so week to week, day to day sort of thing, so there's no real time frame. Just hopefully it pulls up well after every session and then and take it from there. And was it after the John game where you got the back sore? Um, oh, it was a bit tight going into it, but after the game was when it really was um, un untrainable and... Yeah, I couldn't. It was real pain. Must be frustrating. You sat out, had to sit out last year. You played VFL footy, won the best and fairest for Casey in the VFL. You got Chris Dawes and you got Mitch Clark, the other big forwards for the Demons who can't quite get themselves up. So when are we going to see all three of you boys out on the park? Yeah, hopefully soon enough. Hopefully sometime in the uh, first half of the year. That would be um, ideal, but uh, you never know really. It's a game of footy. Every, every week you go out there, you don't know what's going to happen. So exactly right. hopefully sooner rather than later. And Paul Ruse, I'm told, made the trip across to the west to sit down with mum and dad and talk about your future. How'd that go down? Yeah, it was, it, it was a bit of carry on. It wasn't really just to see me. He was over to see a few of the other boys. Yeah, mate, so. no, don't drown the story. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it was good. That was good for him to you know come over and show his appreciation and show that he that he gave care. So that no, was really good. And you lived with the Viney family last year with Jack and with the the top Jimmy Tompus, the three of you. Is that still going on, or have you had enough of those? No, nah, Meg uh, couldn't handle the the cooking load, so she got rid of us. But uh, no, nah, they were doing renovations. So we had to move out, so I've moved in with um, Dan Kent, so that's going good. Well, we need you playing, so just again, uh, I don't want to lock you in, but you think maybe two to three? Oh, hopefully, I can't really, can't really lock it in, but that's hopefully the plan. Well, the big number one Guernsey, the big key forwards, Jim, they're very hard to come by. This is one of the very best in the competition, so good luck from me and all the footy world, mate. <laughs> Great to have you here, and here you are. The best young talent in the country, Jim. Gary. Well, I'll tell you what, I, this, mate, Gary loves that particular segment, but when Jesse Hogan was standing there next to him, I thought I saw a trouser chubby just starting to drift out. Look at him. He's that excited about the big key forward from Melbourne. We are excited too. We're taking a break because Sam and Street Talk from Sydney is next. to celebrate Buddy Franklin's first Premiership game with the Swans. Peter about it. You heard of AFL? Yeah, you lose it. Not, not that good. Uh, you go to the footy at all? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's how slack I am. <laughs> it's been given $10 million, madam. Madam? You into the football? <laughs> AFL? No rugby league. Well, what about AFL? Have you heard of the Giants? They suck. Have you heard of Buddy Franklin? Sucks. He's got $10 million to suck. That's a lot of sucking power. Wanker. Hey, Sam. Yeah, it's me. Didn't recognise you, mate. I love you. Do you, know? I love oh, you too. You I could easily love you. Now, look here, look here. We could be Times International Couple oh. of the Year. Hi. Buddy Franklin has been signed for $10 million to play for the Swans. Oh, against you against your you. side here, the Giants. Yeah, I got you in here. Yeah, people, yeah. people, yeah. people. Football. Football, yeah. yeah. Have you ever right. been to the football? Nah. So how do we get into their Mitchie pants? What's that, though? How do we get into their Mitchie pants? Well, I can make it really easy. I can facilitate entry by opening them up. Oh, nice. Yeah. Me, I just went to the doctors. And me, I'm just going shopping yeah, again. I'm, I'm, I'm not qualified doctor, but I might give you some... What's wrong with anything I could help you with? Or? Oh, you can go over me if you want. Any day. Ain't all about it. Movement in the pants. I, I don't mind. Uh, I quite appreciate this. You're not, you're Do you want my not, number? You're not hitting on me, are you? No. I... Here, I'll just give you my number and you can uh, just call me later. OK. Look, I've even... One of my buttons on my fly has just come open in anticipation. Look at that. An old newspaper boy, you know, that used oh, to stand... Oh, yes, I know, the yeah. newspaper man. What are you eating? What is that? Mongolian lamb. Mongolian lamb. Yeah. Is that a difference from Australian lamb or yeah, yeah, yeah. European it's Chinese lamb? food? It's, 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 and it was and it was uh, born in Mongol. Mongol. <laughs> yeah, Mongol. Should we actually want to embrace? That's me. Kiss you or pash? Or you can do one on the side. Yeah, would that is that likely to rupture me nostrils or something if I got oh, close? Or... Yeah, just give me one on the side. But what about here? What, you want to kiss my nose? No. Well, you want to lick it? 
lick your nose. Do you want to lick it? Um, when he plays the first game against the Giants, which is round one, mm -hmm. now, stick with me here, what do you think the headline in the paper will be? Go to the West as we are the really best. The, the, the very best. Is that what's that? Very. For the double R? Yes. Oh, no, lick, lick. What about? lick, lick. Come back, Giants. That's and I know yeah, Gi I think that's Gans, sir. No, joints. Yeah, G I A, I think. G-A-I-N-T, yeah, joints. I know, uh, jo uh, no, um, I'm gonna just ask, I think I Look it, come on, look it. Ha <laughs> ha! Kick. Samas. Go, buddy, go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, even for the footy show, I don't think I could lick this woman's nose. Only because, not that I wouldn't want to, but people write in and say that it's unhygienic. Come on. You're a bloody lick. star, Al. You've got, me, you've got me frisky, I'll tell you that. He's going to kick ass and his team's going hardcore. Too much talk, 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 talk. Do you want to lick my nose? <laughs> yeah, I'll lick your nose, look. Thank you. <laughs> I tell you, it's building, it's going to be a massive game. It is GWS Giants taking on the Sydney Swans Saturday afternoon at Spotless Stadium. <coughs> well, the Giants only went down to Adelaide by eight points last week. Their pre season form hasn't been too bad, and you would expect them to improve. They only had the one win last year, but they will be better after another pre-season. They take on the Sydney Swans, finished fourth on the ladder last year. Added some very big names, including one Buddy Franklin. And if you ever, you can't quite see the emergency uh, here, but this is how well the Swans are going. Ryan O'Keefe has been named emergency for the Sydney Swans. So, Dice, that would suggest to me they're in pretty good shape. Yeah, no doubt. No, I reckon the Swannies will uh, be far too strong. Far too strong. No. Yeah, I totally agree with Dice. I think uh, Sydney are still a force to be reckoned with and they'll have another good season and they'll win this game comfortably. Yeah, yeah a lot of pressure on Sydney to uh, win a lot of games this year. GWS, they'll still win some. Those young kids are really good. And a lot of people have been wondering why Buddy went to Sydney. Well, Gary Lyon, it's because the price was oh, right. <laughs> 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 Still funny, Gary, every time. Hey, uh, every said, time sorry. Funny. Can no. I say yes, oh. I beat you. No, I no. beat you. Yes. Ice. No. Dale, did I say I was first, doing this? First in, best dress, so I'm going for the swans. <laughs> no, I'll do mine next week. OK. Footy is back uh, for us, and so are the money back so specials Gary. from our great friends at sportsbet.com.au. Check this out for a great offer. For all the matches in round one, if your team leads at any break but loses the match, you get your money back. So Sportsbet will refund your head-to-head -head bet up to 100 bucks. Pies and the Dockers to kick off the year. Both clubs will be having a real quack, so this could be a match where momentum swings. So if your team leads at quarter time, half time, or three quarter time but lose the match, your money back. This happened in a whopping five out of the nine matches in round one and two last year, so don't miss out. Conditions apply, visit sportsbet.com.au. For further details, please gamble responsibly. Gary went over in the ad break before this he segment and said to Shane, I'm playing the certainty, so don't you do it. It's exactly and then right. Shane put his certainty up, so <laughs> sucked in. <That's> <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a break. When we come back, the audience here have their say on oh, the footy show. Wow. Whoever said Colin supporters don't have teeth, look at these teeth! God, I just stood in the foyer for 15 minutes to come into this booth, standing with three f***ing Collingwood supporters. Well, Dale, you're a lovely young man. And I am so disappointed in you. Why did you leave the Saints? Facebook vlogs. I'm sick and tired of being asked to play these stupid games. I don't want to play Candy Crush or a friggin' farm game! Just why did you? When I'm pulling up at a set of lights, I see a little girly car and I'm thinking to myself, it's going to be a hot chick. Pull up, bang, it's a dude. Moustache, beard, looking real manly, messing up my whole perk. You know, you should have done that. Buddy, that beard ain't doing you any favours. Get rid of it. Yeah. I wasn't rude to you in the letter I wrote you, was I? You know what really 
annoys me, tall people. So Aaron Sandler, don't ask me out on a date. I hate them at Seaford. Absolutely hate it. All those supporters out there that don't think the pies are going to make the top eight, including you, Sam, you can get stuff. Get stuff. Get We're winning the flag! You look shocking in blue and white. Where's your red, white and black? Ivy! Ivy's over there. Ivy! Sorry, Jim. What do you think, guys, uh, seriously, about Nikki Dell decamping? Yeah! Ask me again. Is that you, Ivy? Yeah. Yes, it's What Ivy. do you think, Ivy? I wonder what you think about Del Santo leaving. Well, he's, it's up to him. He's a very nice young man, but he, he knows how we felt when he left. Did you I... get my letter? No. <laughs> Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Nick, yes. of course you did. Nick, did you get yeah, the letter, yeah, Nick? Yeah, you did. Think I got the letter. What yeah. did it say? Said you're a very naughty boy for yeah, going. Pretty much. I'm going to be going the long way around to get out of this place. <laughs> hey, this hey, place. Yeah. I'm I sorry, Ivy. I wasn't rude, was I? What's that, sorry? In the letter I wrote to you? No, yes. you've never been rude to me in 12 years. You've only been a great support and I have appreciated oh, it. Oh, shut up. Yeah. Yeah. What's the thanks? Don't give it a hug. Don't give her a hug. I'm in a support. I I've been a supporter for 66 years. Yeah. I've got me life member. Go and give her a hug, man. It's and great I would never leave for... my club. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's gone to a reasonable club. Oh, cool. No, 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 Ivy's just, she's about no, to go right okay. off. She's she's dead. Dead. Well she's done, Ivy. Well How are you, darling? Security. Hi, Dal. Must be great that Saints down at Seaford. You must love that. Love it. Security. Hey, uh, Ivy, we're going to send Nick Dell down to see you, Ivy. Oh, I don't to think so. Lovely no, 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 no. to see you, darling. And yes. uh, what we do need to tell you tomorrow on the Today Show, yes. Carl. Oh, yes. Our main man, Carl, our favourite. He's been down to Essendon, done some training with you, big uh, yep. dice, so make sure you have a look at that. And Pharrell Williams oh. is on the Today oh. Show tomorrow Happy. as well, live in the studio. Hey, thanks, Dice, and thanks to Nicky Dell both for coming in. And the show. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice to have you back down there. Glenn, cross over to you, uh, Force. Yeah, thanks. Do you buy a new car? What? Uh, and also, yes, James Brayshaw, uh, good it. luck with the Kangaroos Big next Sam Friday. Says. We'll be back next Wednesday night. Good night. Big Sam says.